Hey, what's up guys, Synapse here. In this video, I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial about lighting. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I use lighting in Cinema 4D to make my videos look epic. Lighting is a really big deal. In this example, I'm gonna use Ruins of Lordaeron. This is one of my favorite scenes. For some reason, the lighting just looks awesome here. This scene has a number of lights, including a backlight that kind of shines this uh, like a bluish light onto the back and it creates shadows so you get a lot of contrast in the text. I'm going to show you a few examples of scenes and I'm going to show you exactly how I set up the lights. Then I'm going to give you some downloads uh, and you can download some of these example scenes. Okay, so let's take a look at this front light. Uh, this is an area light and it's right in front of the text and what makes this light special is that it only affects the text. All right, so the light is not radiating onto anything else. If I click there on the project tab, uh, you can see that I have just the text objects selected, which means this light shines only on those objects, which are the text objects. Now here's another light uh, over on the side. This is also an area light and it affects everything. It has a slight blue tint to it, so it's shining a bluish light onto the text and the scene is already very green so it's going to be a mixture of some blue and green it comes out to be a really nice color uh, for this scene the other light that's way over here on the side is a uh, omnidirectional light and it's way up there on the side all the way to the left and it looks like it has a slightly red green tint to it and that's also going to illuminate the entire scene there's a number of lights in here, including an ambient light. Uh, that one is hiding under the grave somewhere. It doesn't matter where that one is placed. An ambient light has that little checkbox down there selected and it's about 25% intensity, so it's kind of low. What that's gonna do is it's gonna light the entire scene equally, uh, no directionality, and that serves the purpose to fill in the shadows a little bit so the shadows aren't completely dark. They're at least 25% illuminated and bring out some of the details that we might have lost if we let the shadows be completely dark. So let's do a little render of the back of the text and you can see those lights that were to the back and to the side are illuminating the back of the text. And you also get this really cool light coming up from these candles that are down there. Those have a fall off to them. There's some more candles up there on the fence that are also contributing some light, but not very much because they're using this uh, fall off. If you click on the details tab, you can see I use inverse square uh, fall off and I can choose the radius of decay. So there's there's a limit to how far this light is going to transmit. And that gives a very realistic look to the scene as those candles are just lighting up the meshes around them. I'm going to break down each one of these lights and show you exactly how they work and what they do. Here's an example of a World of Warcraft character. This is my character. He has no transmog. Uh, this gear is looks like complete crap, maybe except for the shoulders, head, and chest. Uh, but the rest is like default gear, so it really doesn't match. I'm gonna set this one up. I'm gonna let you download this file uh, so you can see how I set up the lights here. So the character standing there, uh, there's a backlight, there's a front light, and there's actually two front lights. And this would be consistent with, say, a three-point lighting. And although the gear doesn't match, it's going to be a good example of how you can implement your character into Cinema 4D. All right, let's do a little render and see what it looks like. I use some global illumination and ambient occlusion. So you can see how that's set up if you download this file. The backlight is illuminating the back of the character with some blue. And if we go to the back, of the character. Let me turn off the uh, global illumination and ambient occlusion so it renders quickly. And I'll show you that the backlight is really illuminating the back in a big way. And if we spin back over to the front, uh, you can see it's not quite as bright because the backlight is just lighting the back, not the front. While I was streaming this, somebody mentioned maybe that they would add a little bit more ambient light to this because this scene is kind of dark. The character's pretty dark and the shadows are dark. I like this one a little bit dark in the front because the gear is dark. It's like my character's actually a holy paladin, 
but he's got this dark gear. He looks more like a death knight or something, and I kind of think that's cool. So the dark gear with some shadows around it really kind of tells a story. So let's pan around here. You can see that the character is standing on a platform, which is totally optional. It's got that very long backlight back there. It's an area light. I've never really tried using such a long area light before, uh, but the effect that it has is to really spreads out. Let's take a look at another example. This one here is text that was used in Swifty's Hall of Fame tribute. I'll show a little bit from that video. You can see the 3D text looks really cool and really matches the scene. So how I did that was I used this triple array light that's back there. You can see those three rings and that's done using an array and that creates a lot of light and it makes the light very soft. If I render it, you can see what the text looks like. Uh, it's got this purple color to it and that's due to those purple lights that are in the front. And if we zoom out, you can see those lights back there kind of an orangish color and some that are a purple bluish color to create this lighting effect. This kind of lighting works out really well. I can imagine you using this for any text. All right, this scene right here is kind of cute, I suppose, because it's got some Minecraft stuff in it. And this one is lit using the physical sky that's built into Cinema 4D. And I think the physical sky goes great for Minecraft scenes. Uh, you can see that the shadows are pretty hard and sharp. Um, that's kind of part of what the physical sky does. But in the shadows, you see what's called the environment. It's just slightly lit with kind of a purplish color in or a bluish color in the shadows. Those parameters can be set in the physical sky. The physical sky is pretty robust. You can choose how you exactly how you want it to be lit. The cool thing about this is you can choose what time of day it is. And if I uh, make it look like it's a little earlier in the day, the sun will accordingly change position in the sky and you'll get different shadows. And you can see the sun is rising and you get those really long shadows from the sun coming over the horizon. And it also has this. This one here is just going to show the different lights and the different shadows, how they work. So we'll break it down using a really simple scene. This is the Omni light. I'm going to turn the shadow off and this is what it looks like with no shadow. Okay. There's no shadows behind those blocks. But when I turn the area shadow on, you're going to see those rich, deep shadows appear behind those blocks. Now I can choose the shadow maps shadow. Those are the two that I use most often. And uh, that shadow looks pretty good. It's nice and soft compared to the area light, which is a little harder, but I use the mostly the area light. It works the best with all the different light types, it seems. Uh, but you can switch between the two to get the effect that you're looking for. Now let me switch over to the area light. This area light is going to be a, a 3D cube. And that's what that white square is right there. The light is going to emit from that entire area. That's why it's called an area light. Select it like that. And uh, let me go over to the details and I select cube. Now look what it does with the shadow. Because it's such a large wide light, the shadows look completely different. So that's the cool effect you can get from area lights. They really soften up the light a little bit. It's not such a hard shadow. You can create that effect of multiple light sources with just one large area light, kind of like a soft box might do. So let's take a look at this light here, I'm going to use a fall off on this light. This is going to be an Omni light, but I selected there in the details tab, the uh, fall off effect. And what it does is it only lights a small area and the further away you get from the light, the more the light just falls off into darkness. If you look at the top right, there's a block up there. You can barely see it. It's in the shadow. How you enable this is you go to the details tab, go to the fall off and select that inverse square physically accurate and then you can select the radius of the light and if I make it much smaller you can see the objects far away from the light get darker and you can't even see the block that's in the distance it's completely disappeared as that light falls off these lights are really important for stuff like you know candlelight or torches or lamps I find these really nice to use in World of Warcraft scenes when I'm indoors and I'm uh, working with like torches or something like that it really just Okay, let's take a look at how the array works. And this is an array of lights. 
Uh, it's basically one light that's set up under an array and I can have as many copies of lights as I want. In this example, there are five total lights. And so that's gonna create a lot of lighting. It's also gonna create a soft look. Now, when I enable shadows, you can see it almost looks like the area light effect, but it's a little bit different if I select the area, shadow, and render it. Uh, you can see the shadows are a bit harder. The array light seems to look a little bit better if you used soft shadows, um, but it depends on the effect you're looking for. This is definitely a type of lighting you should consider in your scenes. Try these different lights out on your scenes. Try the different shadows. If you want to download these files, I'm going to put them up on my website. Just check for the link down in the description. And uh, these downloads are going to be for website members and Twitch subscribers. Uh, let me know what some of your favorite lighting setups are. The next time we'll do something a little bit more advanced. And let's help each other out to make the coolest scenes in the universe using those epic lighting setups. All right, guys. Cheers. You guys drive the content for this channel, so if you like this video and you learned something, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments. Good luck and have fun.